In tonight's Q2 Rewind, we look back at the construction of the tallest building in Montana. The year 1985, First Interstate Center became a major focal point of the billing skyline. And as the Q2 archives reveal, construction wrapped up right in the middle of a shaky economy. Billings is called the Magic City because folks say it sprung up almost overnight. That's former Q2 reporter Mary Hoffner reporting on Billings' growth in the mid-80s. Her reference to the city's spellbinding growth was an apt allusion for the tail end of an era when a booming economy pushed the city skywards. First Northwestern Bank, now Wells Fargo Plaza, jumped to prominence with its completion in 1977. Not long after, the Sheridan Hotel, now the Doubletree by Hilton, leapt up across the street and opened its doors in 1980. All this set the stage for what remains Montana's tallest building, the first interstate center. In the early 80s, during a slipping economy, developer Joel Long and First Interstate Bank's Tom Scott hatched their plan to kiss the sky. I think we were outgrowing our building uh, uh, a couple blocks away. And we had options to add on, but adding on to building sometimes is not the most aesthetic. So uh, we began talking about a new building. I was thinking of building a Pan's Western 4. Tom wanted 60,000 square feet, I was going to do 80. We put that together and had a 15-story building. Then we added three more stories to get the tallest. We made sure that it was going to be the tallest, not the second tallest, but the tallest. Their design won to complement and capture the colors of the locale, a sandstone valley in big sky country. Here, it was the rims and it was the sky. It was fun to come up here when there were windows and look out between the iron girders and, and imagine what it would look like. Oh, I think it's a lot of its timing. I think our timing was good. Capturing that moment, if you can, what I think would be challenging today but our time was good. Starting in about 80, the economy of Billings started going down. And that economy didn't really turn around until 87. The exciting part was, could we fill the building? As the building grew taller, the economy kept falling lower. We reported then that this new tower would open its doors in 1985, near the bottom of the economy and amid a glut of office space. Just about everywhere you look, someone has a sign saying they'll sell, rent, or lease office space. Long says while his buildings have contributed to the surplus of office space, it's not all bad news for the community. Old space, say the Class C space, that needs remodeling once the tenant moves out, the landlord uh, is more or less forced to go in and remodel his building. It took hard work to win over those tenants but the tower started out with some big names to move in with the bank, which itself took up about a third of the building. Mountain Bell has three floors, IBM three floors, New York Life one floor. We're excited about everything. We waited 19 months to get here. More than 30 years later, no one in these parts has dared build higher. Long and Scott, still proud of their achievement. Extremely gratifying to see how well it stood up. This building is who we are. I've been proud all these years of what uh, this means to Billings and the identity uh, it has brought to First Interstate Bank. Very cool. Looking back, the cost of building the First Interstate Tower, a little over $20 million. And by the way, to this day, it remains the tallest building between Spokane and Minneapolis and Denver and Calgary. Janelle? All right. Thanks, Jay.